Ned Stark stood atop a mount. He had no idea how he got there. All he knew that something was calling him there. He was supposed to be here, though he was not sure why. A distant screech was heard from behind him as he spun atop the summit. Snow continuously fell all around him. Ned wasn't even sure if he was in the north anymore. He saw Rhaegal dip in and out of the clouds during this twilight hour. Eddard stared longingly at his father's dragon, knowing full well the fury he unleashed on the Reach. Assuming, of course, his father was being honest, to which Eddard did believe. Rhaegal's roar turned into a screech as another set of wings flapped down upon him. Eddard spun again as the two dragons were set upon a collision course. He longed to warn Rhaegal, to order him to flee. He leaned forward out of instinct and lost his footing. As he slid down his backside and grasped at the loose snow to break his fall. Despite his effort, he fell over the cliff and felt his stomach rise into his throat. <gasps> Eddard woke as he felt hot breath on his sweaty face. A pair of vivid yellow eyes were trained upon his, likely drawn to his mumblings in his sleep. Where the bloody hell is Tarly? Eddard thought to himself as the dark-haired wolf stared at him mere inches from his face. Eddard knew there was little game in this area. The watch hunted these lands very well. The mammoth wolf appeared to be hungry as it licked its lips in between slight growls. Ned finally heard a sword being unsheathed, and this attracted the wolf's attention as John Tarley stood tall and approached them slowly. Ned turned his head. No, he mouthed to little John. This slight communication aggravated the wolf into aggression. It pressed its nose to Eddard's face as a low rumble emitted from between its bared teeth. Before Eddard could draw his next breath, the wolf bolted over the campfire and into the tree line. Ned and John exhaled together as Ned then righted himself. The bloody hell was that? John exhaled as he broke his stare into the tree line. It was a warning, I think. Eddard exclaimed as he reached his feet. Warning? From what? John asked as he sheathed his steel. The damn wolf didn't speak the common tongue. Eddard asked as he warmed his hands in the campfire. What were you going to do? Eddard asked with a raised head. Besides save your life, I'd prefer to save his. That was the stranger. Lord Bran told me of him while I was his ward. John admitted as he took a seat on the opposite side of the fire. For a few uncomfortable moments, neither spoke until Ned broke the silence. Thanks, Eddard said with a head nod and the crack of a smile. John then returned the head nod with a typical sour look upon his face. I'm sorry about your brother. I can't criticize Lord Samwell for blaming my father. I just hope you don't as well. Young Eddard exclaimed with sincerity. I don't. Sir John is a good man, from a good family. I don't judge him for the dragon massacre of the Reach. It doesn't seem to be in his nature as a Stark. The Starks treated me well, for nearly all of my life. I can't imagine a scenario where Sir John made an irresponsible decision regarding my brother's ranging. John concluded as he added another log onto the hissing, popping fire. Their conversation continued when neither returned to sleep as the sun rose over the horizon. The campfire was reduced to a smolder as the two young men then saddled their horses. Hours later, their horses trotted along the King's Road as the sun rose high in the overcast sky. Neither young men spoke much on their casual three-day ride down from Castle Black. John suddenly charged ahead of Ned and unsheathed his sword in a response to something. Ned craned his neck and brought his horse to a halt, wondering what it had alarmed little John. Ned heard a faint whistle from the woods. He recognized it immediately and set his horse into a gallop. John, John, lower your sword. He screamed over the loud thuds of his horse's hooves. John Tarley just glanced over his shoulder at Ned as an arrow whistled past his ear and struck into a nearby tree. John heard Eddard's warnings, but a lowered weapon would likely make his death. John searched the tree line for the assailant, just as Eddard placed himself between John and the invisible threat. John refused to lower his steel as Eddard returned the whistle to the wind. After a few tense seconds, Eddard's blood riders emerged from the brush. Your people, Stark? Little John asked his sword still raised. Indeed they are, Eddard said with a slight smile. You may want to work on their introductions. Little John warned with a grunt and a sheathed sword. The herd of horses reached Castle Black without incident, Omara reported as she emerged from the tree line atop her mare. 
Edard returned a look to John. He finally relaxed his shoulders, assuming that a Thraki to not be a threat. We should reach Winterfell by nightfall, Argo commented, and Jocko then agreed. I'm aware. I was raised on these roads. Ned responded curtly. The five riders trotted their horses, and the conversation was light. Ned was hoping to avoid the topic of the Tarly army. He thought better of using John's last name in the introductions. More conversation about Little Sam's passing would likely set John even more on edge, Ned thought to himself. The sun ducked below the cloud cover just above the horizon as Winterstown came into view. Ned refused a garrison, as the typical lord's arrival would warrant such an honor. He sent word ahead to the maester, but refused the arrival honors. His uncle Bran was the rightful lord of Winterfell, regardless of what his father might say. There, Bran should stay until his death was confirmed. The pack howled, announcing Ned's arrival as they approached the north gate. The sentry recognized Eddard and granted passage as they trotted their horses to a halt in the courtyard. Ned took in the sight. Maester Ashmore quickly reached the stables to welcome young Eddard was his assumption. The maester could always quickly access the grounds, given his study was moved to the ground floor upon Bran's ascension as the Lord of Winterfell. The wolves continued to howl as the sun dipped well below the horizon. Eddard dismounted as he was greeted by the maester. My lord, he greeted with a slight bow. My lord Tarly, your return is welcomed, as his eyes trained over the foreigners still atop their steeds. They will be welcomed as well. They consist of my personal guard, Eddard explained, as the maester hastily agreed. What news is there? Eddard asked as he pulled his gloves from his hands. Lady Arya will be sailing for White Harbor. She has insisted that the Lord's Chamber remain undisturbed until she arrives. The Maester again drew a deep breath and continued. It has remained so, but the decision rests with you, my lord. The Maester finished. That will be fine, Eddard replied as the courtyard catwalks filled with the inhabitants of the castle, eager to get a look at their new lord. What of Sir Glover? John asked as his boots hit the ground. The Maester turned his attention to Winterfell's former ward. His body was returned to Deepwood Mott, with his brothers to mourn his death, the maester added. I'd like to be shown his quarters, John Tarley asked as the maester's eyes shifted quickly to Eddard for confirmation. Eddard gave a slight nod, and the maester commandeered a guardsman to escort the former ward. There is no need. I know the way. John claimed as he lumbered past Ned. Eddard grasped him by the arm and tilted his head back to reach John's ear. Bring what you find directly to me. Meet me in the hall for dinner. I'll need to formalize your position. Ned finished, and John agreed. The Dothraki still had not dismounted and was awaiting orders. Keisha las Nevak Hethkat. Young Ned offered his blood riders in the Dothraki tongue, an offer he had hoped they would take. To his surprise, they agreed, but demanded to question the guards on duty the night of the incident, again speaking their native eastern tongue. The three galloped out of the courtyard and the maester gestured that Ned would accompany him. It was a short walk to the maester's study. A few ravens had left droppings on the entryway table. A fire roared in the hearth, despite the warm northern weather on this summer night. Ashmore shuffled around his desk and sat with a grunt. Here are the current appointments. Although many of them are untested, Lord Bran was decisive and left little to chance mostly due to his gift, Maester Ashmore revealed. Are there any that need to be replaced? Eddard asked simply, and the old man responded. The captain of the guard? Ashmore replied simply, to Eddard's slight frustration. You misunderstand, dear Maester. Is there anyone who failed my uncle, or even worse, likely to have betrayed him? Eddard asked in a demanding tone. Even if there were, Lord Bran would have known. It is very probable no one in the castle had knowledge of his apprehension. The maester then coughed at the end of his statement. John Tarley will serve as my captain of the guard, and my blood riders will be given a lord's honor. Eddard demanded. The old man again grunted in a disapproving tone. They are my guests, and will be treated as such. He reminded him again, and the maester then nodded. It is not my intention to change the operations of the castle in any significant way. Eddard informed the old man, 
and saw his chest deflate in relief. I am the Lord of Winterfell, temporarily, until my dear uncle returns. Eddard said confidently. Let's hope he does, Maester Ashmore exclaimed in agreement. Starks tend not to do well when outside the sight of the old gods, Ashmore finished in a somber tone. Speaking of which, did my lord uncle ever walk into the Dark Wolf, the Stranger? Eddard asked as Ashmore lifted his tired eyes off of his desktop and upon the young lord. Why do you ask? Did you cross the Stranger's path? He asked slowly, almost regretting having to ask the question. I did. He woke and stared at me, uncomfortably long. I thought it might have been Uncle Bran. Eddard revealed, trying not to sound silly. Interesting, the old man replied as his quill started scratching across the parchment. That's very interesting, Ashmore repeated as Eddard continued to remain patient, never receiving an answer to his inquiry. <laughs>